Hi, everybody. I'm glad that you're joining us today. I am looking out onto an empty sanctuary, but I know normally uh, this place would be filled to capacity. We are very glad that you're here with us and that we can bring this worship service to you. Um, and we pray that even if you aren't part of our church or haven't ever been in a church, that you're watching as well and that this will bless you. One of the things that is, one of the positive things that's come out of this pandemic is that churches everywhere are reporting that their churches are growing. And part of the reason is because we can go online with services like this. So we're going to continue doing this as long as we can. But we're glad you're here today. We're going to celebrate Resurrection Sunday. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, if we were together, I, I would be inviting the kids to come forward right now for my favorite part of the service. I can imagine you running up the center aisle and sitting right here next to me. So if you're watching, and I hope you are, um, I have a story to tell you today. It's a story about a Sunday school teacher who had a group of, of kids with her um, on Easter Sunday. And she asked them to think about what was happening and what they were celebrating on this Easter Sunday. She said, you know, can you imagine that moment when Jesus walked out of the tomb for the first time? And she said, I imagine 
that can you think about what he would have said the very first thing he would have said and one little girl raised her hand she said oh oh i know i know and she said okay well tell me what do you think jesus would have said and the little girl just said this she said ta-da i think that sums it up don't you jesus came out of a tomb he had been dead and now he was alive that's the message of easter so I just want all of you, right where you're sitting right now, to do this with me. Do that. Ready? Ta-da! So when somebody asks you what Easter's all about, you just need to give them one word, and you know what it is. Be blessed and celebrate Easter today. Woo! <laughs> 
Thank you, Anne. What a beautiful song. Well, I was thinking about Easter this past week, about this message. The words pivotal moment kept resonating with me. Someone on the news a few nights ago compared the day when the first infected person stepped off of a boat onto our soil as the single most pivotal moment in recent history. Right up there with other pivotal moments like Pearl Harbor or 9-11. A pivotal moment is a period in time, an event, a significant development upon which many other things turn or begin to start in motion. In other words, a pivotal moment has the effect of changing our reality permanently. It's the moment when someone realizes that after this particular event, things will never be the same again. It's easy to see why many people think of this coronavirus pandemic as that pivotal event in their lives. But as life-altering as this event has been for most of us, I have some news for you this morning. I want to suggest to you that no event in history has ever been quite as pivotal as the moment that we are celebrating now. That is, the moment when a stone was rolled away from the entrance of a tomb and that a man, after being dead and buried for three days, walked out of that tomb fully alive. That is the moment upon which all other moments in history would forever be changed. It was the moment that made every other pivotal moment bearable. What was it about that moment that changed our future forever. That's what I want to talk about today. And this morning, I want to suggest to you three things that changed forever because this one event, this one pivotal moment occurred thousands of years ago. First of all, this moment is pivotal because when Jesus walked out of the tomb, the world was given a truth that we can trust, a truth that we can trust. In John 8, 25, G Jesus was answering his critics and they said, tell us who you are. And he replied, I'm the one I've always claimed to be. When you have killed the Messiah, he said, you will realize that I am he. I don't know if you're like me, but I have become increasingly skeptical of anything I hear on the news these days. I can spend my afternoon watching briefings from the White House and then I can turn on the news channels at night and hear some person refuting or disproving everything that I heard earlier in the day. Calculations about this pandemic have been wrong. Graphs and charts from the leading predictors have missed the mark. So-called experts have contradicted one another, sometimes in the same broadcast. Perhaps the most disconcerting part about this pandemic is that we don't know who to listen to. We don't know who to trust. When Jesus walked out of that tomb alive, the world discovered a truth that we could trust. Let's not forget that while he walked the earth, he made some pretty outrageous claims about himself. And he had plenty of critics, plenty of skeptics in the crowd. He made the claim that no other religious leader ever made about themselves. He said things like, I'm the savior of the world. I am God. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. These claims were so outrageous that it was impossible to find any wiggle room, impossible to present other options and still believe him. 
He was either telling the truth or he was a complete fraud. There was no middle ground. But when he walked out of that tomb, the words he had been telling his skeptics became real. When he said, when you've killed the Messiah, you will realize that I am he. Just wait for Easter. In other words, he could have said, if you don't believe me now, just wait till I rise from the dead and then you'll know. Because in that moment, everything that he said about himself was confirmed. No one but God could come back from the dead. They wouldn't realize that he was a truth that they could trust until he had been killed and resurrected. Then it would be obvious. When he walked out, the world would see for the first time there was a truth, capital T, that they could trust and his name was Jesus. Now that's what I call a pivotal moment. The second reason that the resurrection is the most pivotal moment in history is that it showed us a problem that we could pinpoint. Early last week I began to notice something about myself at the grocery store. After all the warnings about social distancing, how the virus can be spread by just a few droplets in the air, and how being in crowds was the worst thing I could do, I found myself becoming fearful of people. It started to feel like people were the enemy, and I needed to avoid them. I found myself not just social distancing myself from them, but looking at people with suspicion. And I noticed that they were looking at me the same way. This is what can easily happen when we start to think that people are the problem instead of the virus that is inside the people. It's the same thing that happens when we start to think that people are the problem instead of the sin that entangles people. Sometimes I wonder why when Jesus came out of that tomb that day that he didn't hunt down all the people who had beaten and tortured and hung him on the cross. Why didn't he seek retribution for all of his suffering? Because Jesus knew that people weren't the problem. Sin was the problem. And sin had been taken care of on the cross. The Bible says that when he died that day on the cross, he died with all of the sin of humanity on himself. He died with it and then he took it with him to the grave and it was buried. And when he walked out of the tomb, he left it all behind. He pinpointed the problem. People were not the problem. Sin was the problem. And the Bible says that all people who would believe in him could be forgiven of the problem. They could become new by receiving him into their life. This is the pivotal moment, particularly that the church must understand. Those who have believed in Christ and who have received new life can so often forget that people are not the problem. People who are struggling with sin need a cure, not condemnation. When Jesus walked out of the tomb, there was another pivotal moment that happened. The world received a hope that we can hold on to. A hope that we can hold on to. Some of the most hopeful news that I've heard is the hope of a vaccine for the coronavirus. And as we are speaking right now, doctors and scientists and laboratories everywhere are scrambling to develop a vaccine that will protect us from this virus. Can you imagine being the first scientist or the first group of scientists to discover this vaccine? Can you imagine the elation, the joy, the high fives, the social distancing pats on the back and the hugs. 
I mean, if it was you, who would you want to tell first? Your family? Your friends? What's the first thing you would do? The first place that you would go? When the news began to dawn on the disciples on that first resurrection day that Jesus had been seen alive, when all that he had said about himself was true and that their hope was being restored, all of them had the same response. They went and they told somebody. They did not keep it to themselves. The women rushed to tell their friends, and from there the word spread like a pandemic, moving quickly from one person to the next, unchecked, unlimited, uncontrollable joy. When people receive this kind of hope that they can hold on to, there's nothing that will stop them from spreading it everywhere. Can you imagine a scenario when after seeing Jesus alive and walking around, the disciples would do nothing? Or that they would just get together with their group, their closest friends, in a building that they liked and a worship music that they liked and activities that they enjoyed? I doubt that's all they would do. In fact, in every situation in the Bible when people encountered the risen Christ, they were compelled to go and tell someone. The lame man went to the synagogue. The woman at the well ran into the town. The women at the tomb ran to the disciples. Why? Because they had discovered the vaccine of all vaccines, a virtual hope that they could hold on to. The person of Jesus Christ, who had defeated all death by coming back to life. One of the most pivotal moments for me in the past several years was the day that I came across a simple timeline in the front cover of a Bible that I was using. It was a simple arrow with some pivotal dates listed there, moments that lined out God's story of salvation for the world. Along the lines, we had God creating the world. That was the first thing. And then Moses leading the Israelites out of slavery. And then you had the Jewish nation being exiled. And then the prophets and the kings and the judges, the struggles of the Jewish nation. And then there was the birth of Jesus Christ. And after that, the resurrection of Christ from the dead. But there were only two things left on the timeline. One of them was this, the birth of the church. And after that, the return of Christ. When I saw that blank space that separated those two final pivotal moments, I was struck with overwhelming clarity about the mission of the church the only thing that is left for us to do now is to spend all of our days, our resources, our energy, our talents, and gifts to do one thing. Just like those first disciples, to walk, to run, to zoom, to video, whatever works, to tell the world about the hope that we can hold on to. And to share that hope with as many people as we can. Why is today the most pivotal day in the history of the world? Because Jesus walked out of a tomb alive and he says, I live in you and you can rise with me. When he did that, he gave the world a truth we can trust, a problem we can pinpoint, and a hope that we can hold on to. May this church and all churches get busy spreading that hope one person at a time until the whole world has come to know the hope that is found in Christ. May this be our mission. May this be our prayer.
may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and every day until we meet again.